The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Well, everybody has habits. The good ones benefit us and the bad ones steal from us. But today I want to fix our focus on what it takes to farm good habits. Ginger's here with me today, and we're going to just chat about habits, and then we're going to actually answer some questions that you guys have sent in about some of the things about habits. You know, the, the truth about habits, I think we always have a tendency, Ginger, to fight with the bad ones, and uh, rather than yeah. spending our energies trying to develop the good ones. Yeah, that's very and, true. And I've really come to the conclusion that we're going about it wrong, because the Bible says we overcome evil with good. It says, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So I think it's, it's very uh, proper to say that if we focus on developing good habits, then there won't be room in our life for the bad ones. It takes some pressure off too, doesn't it? It really does. It gives you a more positive look at it. It's like I don't have to fight with this bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I'm overweight, I don't really have to fight with my weight. I can focus on developing good eating habits. Right. Rather really than even focusing on losing weight, we can focus on eating right, and eating right means right portions, mm -hmm. right choices, and getting proper exercise, and then the, the weight will follow along rather than right. just focusing on, I got to lose weight, I can't eat this, I can't eat that. Think about what you can eat, not what you can't eat. Mm -hmm. You know, one, one thing that <laughs> is really encouraging also, is that we are a, a whole person. Right. That everything goes together. And when you're talking about habits, like you said, we do um, instantly think of the bad ones. You know, whether <laughs> we're trying to stop an addiction or we're trying exactly. to stop um, eating poorly. But when we focus on even our relationship with God, um, the habit of spending time in the Word it's going to affect those other bad habits also. That's right. Be because we're spiritual, we're physical, we're emotional, and as those things come together, That's exactly right. just like you said, the bad ones do fall away. Well, and in the book, Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits, and I downplayed the breaking bad ones simply because I really do believe that if we make enough good habits, the bad ones just are not going to find room in our life. Squeeze them out. To operate, squeeze them out. That's yeah. exactly right. And, you know, there's a number of habits that, that I teach on. Uh, the very first one, though, is the God habit. Got to start there. What I lovingly call the God habit because if, and, you know, the Bible, that's, not a, that's not a wrong statement because the Bible talks about many different men and women of God, and it says they habitually walked with God. Mm -hmm. Jesus habitually went to a certain place and prayed all the time. So they had... A God habit. They had a habit of seeking God before they tried to do anything else. And if people would just do that, if they would just develop that habit, then so many of the other things would fall in line. Yeah. So this is a very practical approach. I was thinking, you know, I don't need other people's questions. I can just take a half hour here and you can fix all my <laughs> bad habits. We got a lot to talk about. But really with this type of approach, with being able to, to go through the different things and make them priorities in our life mm -hmm. instead of making our priority fighting the bad things. Right, exactly. We'll start to see changes. Well, and kind of like, and I know you were, you were teasing, but you said you can just fix all my bad habits. But <laughs> the truth is, is all of yours, all of mine, or all of yours is not going to be fixed at once. And even if you, which so often people will buy a book like this and they'll think reading the book is going to change it. Yeah. And it's not really. This is going to give you the information you need on how to work with God to let him change it in your life. But one of the first things I talk about in here is to find one thing. You know, if you, if you feel like you have 30 bad habits, find one thing. Tackle you one know, at a time. First thing you do is let God show you what is maybe the most important. Or if there's something yeah. that you feel like is hurting you more than others, or maybe you have a bad habit that's hurting the other people in your life. And so, you know, you could just have a bad habit of just constantly getting in other people's business or constantly having to have an opinion about everything. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not only hurting you, but that's hurting the other people around you. Right. So there, there are 
There are mental habits that are bad. There are mm -hmm. emotional habits that are bad. There are physical habits right. that are bad. And you have to start with one. Well, here's an example. If, if like you said, one of your, your habits is getting involved in ways that you shouldn't, having an, an opinion in other people's lives, the habit of adding value to others is a, is a contrast to that. Right. Instead of thinking what I need to do to fix them, thinking exactly. what do I have to offer to help them. In because really we can't change people anyway, only God can. Exactly. And the more you hammer somebody about what's wrong with them, yeah. the more of it you're likely to see. And so when you, when you constantly give your opinion to people or every time they say something, you have to disagree with them or have another opinion, it does make them feel belittled. It makes them feel that you don't really value their advice. Mm -hmm. And so you can many times add value to people just by simply listening to them and not having to give your opinion. Yeah. It's, you know, most of the time, even when people ask you for your opinion, they really only want you to agree with them. <laughs> they really don't <laughs> want your true. opinion. Yeah. But I, my goodness, what a difference it would make if we would just make a commitment to only give our opinion if somebody ask for it. I yeah. mean, I, I know it's a, you know, I'm sure that I was annoying to people, giving my opinion all the time because I was very opinionated and probably still I am a little bit more than I should be. <laughs> Aren't but, we all? <laughs> uh, uh, thank God I can focus on adding value to people. Right. And then that's going to help overcome exactly. these other habits. So I'm really excited about this book simply because I think it's a fresh approach. It's not a book about how to break bad habits so much as it is a book about how to make good habits. And my but publisher- But you get both when you do it. Right. My publisher read this book and uh, he said, it's just a book full of a lot of practical advice. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we need. We don't need something that's so spiritual that it's floating around over our head and we never get it. Right. We need good practical advice. Right. Well, it is broken up into a lot of different good habits right. that you're talking about. So I have, I have questions from people that, that have asked these about several of these different habits. Okay. So let's start with the God habit, um, which also connects with one of the most important things you talk about, and it's the second habit, is the habits of thoughts and words. Right. And the question comes from Delori and says, I'm a believer, but as a result of my life experience, I have developed um, very concrete ideas about life, people, and God, and myself, most of which are not even true. Um, <laughs> these negative thoughts are ingrained in me. How can I change and form thinking good habits about God, myself, and others? Well, the thing that we need to realize, and, and, and really it's exciting to realize this, is you can do your own thinking. It's not just what pops in your head. Right. So, you know, if you're passive and you're just going to think whatever falls in your head, then the devil's going to use it as a garbage dump. I mean, the Bible says plainly that we are to cast down wrong thoughts, wrong imaginations, mm -hmm. theories, reasons, anything that disagrees with the Word of God. Right. We're to cast that down and then choose to think on something that is proper. Right. And, and the thing is, is if I'm doing my own thinking, then my mind is not an empty place for the wrong thoughts to come and take nest. So, and I, I believe in getting a, a jump on it in the morning. I have found that uh, when you're sleepy, when you're a little tired, boy, the enemy makes a bid for your mind. Yeah. And so I have formed a habit and it took a lot of time because I had a very negative mind. I have formed a habit of when I wake up now, I, I wake up while I'm still waking up thinking about God, asking him to help me with my day. Now, do I ever have bad thoughts? Absolutely. <laughs> but I've learned that I can't keep those. I can cast them down. So for this young lady who wants to change her thoughts, it does happen a little bit at a time. You don't do it without praying for God to help you. And, but rather than just trying not to think this, well, I'm gonna try not to yeah. think this, I'm gonna try not to think this, fill your mind with good thoughts and there won't be any room for the bad ones. So it's right back, and I, and I feel very strongly about this. I think that there's those two scriptures, we don't realize the value of them. You overcome evil with good. If there's any evil thing in my life or any evil thing that's been done to me, I can overcome that by doing good. Mm -hmm. I don't have to sit around and just fight with the evil. I can do good and overcome it. And 
if you walk in the spirit, Galatians 5, 16 says, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So I can focus on spending time with God, doing good things for other people, adding value to people, uh, being a, a light everywhere that I go. And then because I'm so busy trying to do the right thing, I don't have time yeah. to do the wrong thing. Exactly. And isn't it much more exciting to think about it like that than always, well, I, I, I have to watch my thoughts and I gotta be careful what I eat and, and I, I need to do this and I have to do that and I have to do something else. Yeah. And if you wake up in the morning and that first thought is, you know, oh, I, I dread this day, mm -hmm. then you have the opportunity at that point, instead of going through your whole day like that, to start speaking what God's word says about the blessings that okay, he has for you really and others that day. I've got a really good practical example happen to me this morning. Okay. okay. Dave and I have a little seven pound white Maltese dog named Duchess. We've had her now for almost 12 years and she sleeps between us. She thinks she's the queen of the house. <laughs> well, um, Dave usually takes her out in the morning and she goes out, does her business, then she gets this little meatball that's got medicine in it, and then she's got another little medicine she takes. The dog takes more prescriptions than I do. <laughs> and then she gets her treats, and, and then she goes upstairs with me to my office when I get up where we pray. If I'm still in bed, he'll put her back in bed. Well, the last six, seven months, Dave has gotten a habit of waking up two, three, four o'clock in the morning, and he goes upstairs in his office and sleeps in his recliner. He likes to look out the window. You know, his office has got a lot of windows around. And so for whatever, you know, he's really enjoying that. And uh, so then a lot of mornings now, I have dog duty. And <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound very pleasant when you call it dog duty. <laughs> I, when I get up in the morning, I just want to get my coffee and go. You know, I, I don't want to be doing anything. So uh. I end up now taking care of the dog a lot. Well, last night... <laughs> I told Dave, I said, nah, I'm, I'm kind of on a short time span in the morning. I need to be at the TV studio by 9.30. So, you know, can you take care of the dog? So sometimes if he knows he needs to do that, even if he gets up at, you know, three or four, he'll go ahead and take her out, put her back in bed with me. But when I get up and I have to take her out. So I woke up about 4.30 this morning and Dave was gone and the dog was there. And I thought, uh -huh. <laughs> and, then, and then this was the next thought that came to me. I can do whatever I need to do through Christ who strengthens me. See, I've formed a habit yeah. of believing that, that whatever I need to do, I can do it. And so, so the minute that bad thought started to come, because I have a habit of thinking that I can do what I need to do with Christ, mm -hmm. I squeezed it out right away. Well, I went ahead and got up and my phone rang. It was Dave calling me from his office. He heard me rummaging around in the bathroom downstairs. And he said, oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know I already took Duchess out when I got up at 3.30 this morning. Oh. And so, you know, here I could have been having all these bad thoughts. Well, you know, I asked him to do that and he didn't do it and I'm tired of doing this. And, yeah. you know, it is just a practical example. But most of the things that people have all these bad thoughts about are simple things like that, things you don't feel like that people did for you they should have done. Or, They're not always even right. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, or way, or, you know, even... We, we can think about what we think people are thinking about us. Yes. And, you know, I've just decided that really people don't have me on their mind all the time. They're probably not thinking anything about <laughs> me. They're busy thinking about something else. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a good example. It's very, just get the jump on it. You know, and, yeah. and passivity is the cause of a lot of these problems, Ginger, because people just, they want God to do it all. And God shows us what to do in his word. And then he not only shows us, he gives us his grace to enable us to do it, yeah. but we have to enact our will to do some things. Yeah. Well, here's another good question along that line because um, the bad habit would be um, if someone is a procrastinator mm -hmm. and right. things don't get done, they wait until the last minute. Um, you talk about the habit of being decisive and, and moving forward when you need to. So this question comes from Terry. It says, I'm 60 years old and I struggle with food and money. I have no problem starting